I researched foundations for quite a while, a few years ago, and discovered that all the foundations do not, they, they disperse very little in the way of funds and grants, and they seem to tend to keep the bulk of the money. I have not found that with the Sam Schmidt Paralysis Foundation. I found exactly the opposite. You guys are out there with quality of life, with all sorts of mm -hmm. different uh, types of programs, and I was amazed at the model that was created of collaboration. Any elaboration on that whatsoever? Was it? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we draw the analogy from racing, but uh, a lot of foundations create a, uh, a bit of a, a war chest, and then they, they do their work off the interest. And, you know, to me personally, that does me no good whatsoever. I mean, the, the goal here is, uh, yeah, we're great. We're having our 10th anniversary of our racing to recover gala, but I don't want a 20th. And, uh, my goal is to fire Ida as soon as possible, and, uh, <laughs> and everybody else involved with the foundation. But you know, for she's me, she's a bulldog. My uh, advice is hire her to do something else. Well, chief, she's for, a, she can for do me, it. you know, for me to walk out of this chair, and so uh, that takes investment. And we everything sure. we bring in, we reinvest, and, and a lot of times more than what we bring in. And uh, it's all it's all for that end goal. And same with racing, We're talking about collaboration, it, it's a team effort, and. Um, for years, one of the things, first things I found out while I was uh, doing the research on the research is that uh, for years people would sit in their individual universities in a corner and, you know, get a rat to walk and it's like, and not share the information until it was published because they didn't want to be stealing their ideas and sure. that just, you know, you could have 10 guys doing the same thing around the country and that's just ridiculous. Everybody need that's the way we operate. If you want any money from us, you've got to share your information and uh, you've got to work with other people around the world, uh, you know, towards the common goal of curing paralysis. You said uh, the magic word, cure. <laughs> Elaborate on cure, because there's a misconception, I think, that rolls around the world mm -hmm. uh, about what paralysis is, epilepsy, disease, you know, not diseases, but conditions mm -hmm. that exist, Disorders, yeah. that, the, that they are permanent or they are manageable, uh, and that there is no cure. What does cure mean to you? Uh, cure to me would be able to, uh, you know, pick up my kids and hug them and uh, sure. do, think, do a lot of things that I can't do now uh, without, you know, assistance from an assistant. And uh, um, I think everybody probably has a different, you know, definition, but it's, uh, it's certainly not an overnight thing. Um, when I was first injured, I'm thinking, you know, how hard can this be? Uh, it's, uh, it's something that should be able to be fixed with, you know, just time and money. And I don't know that my opinion is actually straight. I think it is just a matter of time and money. Uh, we've had a bit of a eight-year uh, vacation, so to speak, a little bit with the Bush administration policy on stem cells. I think that's really hurt the progress in the United States towards that deal. But, you know, what needs to happen initially is, um, uh, is to help the people at the time of injury. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest quantifiable situation uh, when you have an initial injury and uh, within, you know, say the first week, uh, decrease that swelling, um, get, you know, the, the negative things that are going in your spinal cord, keep right. them from happening, and, uh, and, and, and start the regeneration process early. Then if we can do that and take it from 10,000 people a year being paralyzed to, you know, nothing or, or next to nothing, then we can focus on the chronic injuries because once somebody's been paralyzed for five years or 10 years or 15 years, then you have other issues. You sure. have atrophy, atrophy and bone density and, mm -hmm. and other things that we need to deal with and, and you know, possibly bridging the gap of the spinal cord injury. But uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, so, you know, define a cure. That is actually one thing we're taking a real hard look at right now because uh, we would like to lead the cure for paralysis, but we need to come up with a, with a really good definition as well. With the stem cell research and the things that are going on right now, do you feel like there's going to be a spike in that ability to, to really take, to take the magnifying glass and really bear down and, and get, get that done? Absolutely, because of really what Obama's done recently, uh, opening up the, uh, really canceling the Bush administration's policy on stem cell research, or lack thereof, and, uh, and opening up funding for that. 
what that means is we have really a lot of smart minds here in the United States, a lot of researchers that if there's no federal support, like there hasn't been for eight years, they're going to go work on something else. Um, but uh, now that there is federal support, uh, a lot of those young, you know, inquisitive minds will start to work on this project. And I think uh, the next four years, you know, for me has a lot of hope that we'll see some, some radical progress. It's going on internationally, and, and frankly, sure. we're behind. But I'd like to be able to speak English. If I, if I go into the knife, I want to be able to talk to my doctor before I do it in English, if, uh, <laughs> if possible. I don't want to go to China or Russia or you know, Colombia or something. I want, I want it done right here. My know? wife is Colombian. I feel exactly yeah. the same way. I, I'm not going down. I'm sorry. I love them to death, all the yeah. Colombian people yeah. in South America. I love them. But no the, disrespect. Just, yep. Uh, we got the FDA approval process. But we have Harvard yeah. and yeah. we have Yale for a reason. Right. <laughs> so exactly. we have all sorts of things to do, but you know, you have uh, managed to emerge as one of those individuals that a lot of people do look up to. I know that, that I, and I detect that's a, kind of embarrasses you a little bit, and that's okay. But, uh, you know, it's... I'm doing what I got to do, and if, if several hundred thousand people walk because of that, that's great. I, I think happy. that's a magnificent thing. All yeah. the best, Sam Schmidt. Thank you, Michelle. Yep.